Hello everyone, welcome to Administrative Law Lectures. In this video, we are going to discuss the concept of administrative law and its evolution. Administrative law is the body of law that governs the activities of administrative agencies of the government. So let's first understand what are the activities of administrative agencies. Administrative agencies can be shortly classified into three, the legislative, the executive, and the judiciary. All the administrative activities can be covered under these three main heads. So the activities of administrative agencies comprises legislation, execution, and adjudication. Administrative agencies can make rules or legislate when delegated to them by the legislature as and when the need be. They can execute or implement or enforce public policy. They can adjudicate or pronounce decisions while giving judgments on certain matters. These duties, powers and also the manner in which these powers are executed are governed by administrative law. The concept of administrative law is founded on the following principles. Power is conferred on the administration by law. In welfare state, the scope of activities of the government have expanded. Today, the state is the protector, provider, entrepreneur, regulator, and arbiter. So rule making power and an authority to decide are described as effective and powerful weapons of administration. So without these discretionary powers on the administrative authorities, there cannot be sound administration. The administration cannot be effective without powers on the administration. But no power is absolute or uncontrolled howsoever broad the nature of the power might be. All powers have two inherent characters. First, they are not absolute or unfettered. Second, they are likely to be abused. It is said that powers tends to corrupt and absolute power corrupts absolutely. So administrative law attempts to control the powers of the government and its agencies so that the discretionary powers may not be turned into arbitrary powers. So there should be a reasonable restriction on exercise of such powers depending on the situation. Administrative law developed to restrict the arbitrary exercise of powers by subordinating it to a well-defined law to ensure that rule of law prevails despite the presence of discretionary powers vested in the administrators. As administrative law is based on the concept of rule of law, it supports natural justice to adjudicate based on impartiality unjustness and prescribed laws and legal methods while serving the people and deciding cases brought before its tribunals. Administrative law provides an effective mechanism and adequate protection to ensure that the administrative or public authorities works in a legal, reasonable and efficient manner. It helps to bring a balance between two conflicting forces, that is individual rights and public interest. Evolution 
administrative law in India can be traced back to ancient history times. The Maurya and the Gupta dynasties of ancient India had a centralized administrative system. Following this, the medieval India, for example, Mughal Empire, had somewhat similar administrative system. There was unified administration. The Emperor Akbar established a form of delegated government in which the provincial governors were personally responsible to him for the quality of government in their entire territory. The kings in the anterior period of history were majorly concerned about three things. Protecting the state from external aggression, maintaining law and order, and collecting taxes. Though we cannot ignore effective Mughal administrative policy to regulate trade, extensive road links, manufacturing industries, and agriculture. That's why the Indian economy was large and prosperous under the Mughal Empire. By 1700, the GDP of Mughal India was the largest in the world. Leader in manufacturing up till 18th century. Also, the real wages and living standards in 18th century Mughal Bengal and South India were higher than in Britain, which in turn had the highest living standards. British India With the arrival of the British in India, there was the advent of modern administrative law. Establishment of East India Company increased the government's powers manifold. Several acts, legislations and statutes were brought by the British Parliament for regulating public safety, health, morality, transport and labor relations. Delegated legislation was accepted as legitimate power of the executive in Northern Indian Canal and Drainage Act 1873 and Opium Act of 1878. In many statutes, provisions were made vis a vis granting of permits and licenses and settlement of disputes by administrative authorities and tribunals. During the Second World War, the executive powers increased manifold by virtue of Defense of India Act. In addition to this, the government issued many orders and ordinances covering several matters by way of administrative instructions. Post-independence After independence, India adopted a welfare state approach, which in turn increased state activities. With increase in the power and the activities of the government and the administrative authorities, the need for the rule of law and judicial review of state actions also increased. The philosophy of the welfare state is specifically embodied in the Constitution of India. In the Constitution itself, provisions were made to secure to all citizens social, economic and political justice, equality of status and opportunity. The ownership and control of material resources of the society should be so distributed as best to subserve the common good. For better administration and execution of laws at the ground level, procedures such as laying and delegated legislation were borrowed from contemporary regimes and customized to cater to the Indian needs. Also, if rules, regulations and orders 
passed by the administrative authorities were found were found to be beyond their legislative powers then such orders rules and regulations were to be declared ultra virus unconstitutional illegal and void this flexibility of administrative law also marks an important feature of evolution of administrative law in india we can understand the concept of administrative law better when we watch the part 2 of this video in which i have covered the causes and the reasons for the growth of administrative law definitions of administrative law and the scope of administrative law so please watch the part 2 video on the administrative law thank you for watching this video on administrative